Hemodialysis Hemodialysis is the most common renal replacement therapy used with end-stage kidney disease and kidney failure. Hemodialysis involves passing the patient's blood through an artificial semi-permeable membrane to perform filtering and excretion function of the kidneys. Hemodialysis therapy is started based on the signs and symptoms and not on the GFR. Hemodialysis may be necessary and started immediately for patients who have fluid overload that does not respond to diuretics, peri diuretics peri pericarditis, uncontrolled hypertension, and neurological problems. Most commonly, hemodialysis is started when uremic manifestations such as Nausea and vomiting, in decreased attention span, decreased cognition, worsening anemia and pruritus are present. Hemodialysis has um, four different parts. The first is the dialyzer, which is also referred to as the artificial kidney. It has the blood comp compartment, the dialysate compartment, the semi-permeable membrane, and the enclosed support structure. The second part is the dialysate in itself. The solution. The third is the vascular axis routes, and fourth is the hemodialysis machine. To perform hemodialysis, a very rapid blood flow is required, and access to a large blood vessel is essential. The types of vascular axis includes arteriovenous fistula, arteriovenous graft, and temporary vascular axis. Collateral circulation develop below the level of the fistula. Thrombosis or clotting of the AV axis is the most frequent complication and may need TPA for declotting the axis. Infections are introduced during cannulation. Using sterile techniques should be used to prevent infections. Aneurysms are caused by repeated needle punctures at the same time, at the same site. Ischemia occurs in a few patients with vascular axis when the fistula decreases arterial blood flow to areas below the fistula. This phenomenon, phenomena is referred to as the steel syndrome and the symptoms can vary from cold or numb fingers to gangrene. If the collateral circulation is inadequate, the fistula may need to be surgically tied off a new one will need to be created. Arteriovenous fistulas have the best overall patency rates and the least number of complications, like thrombosis and infections. In some situations, when immediate vascular access is required, temporary percutaneous cannulation of the internal jugular or femoral vein is performed. This is a picture of um, the arteriovenous fistula and arteriovenous graft. The top one is the arteriovenous um, fistula and the bottom one is the graft. So you can see the artery here and the vein here and they both are anastomos together and basically the smaller vein with the lesser pressure is made to arterialize by when the blood from the artery flows with the pressure into the vein and the vein becomes bigger and thicker to withstand the high pressure of blood coming into it. Arteriovenous fistula is created by the anastomosis of the artery and the vein. The fistula allows arterial blood to flow through the vein and the vein becomes arterialized with a larger caliber and thicker walls. Maturation time may take about six weeks to months. AV fistulas should be, re should be placed at least three months before the need to initiate hemodialysis. Normally, when the GFR is less than 29 liters per minute, preparations for an AV fistula is made. Patients awaiting an AV fistula will be on arm precautions in preparation for the surgery. Normally, a thrill can be felt by palpating the area of anastomosis 
and a bruy or a rushing sound can be heard with a stethoscope. The bruy and the thrill are created by the arterial blood moving at a high velocity through the vein. These are different vascular axis catheters which are used in hemodialysis. In some situations when immediate vascular access is required, catheterization of the internal jugular or the femoral vein is performed. The catheter usually have a double external lumen with an internal septum separating the two internal segments. One lumen, one lumen is used for the blood removal and the other for the blood return. These catheters have high rates of infection, dislodgement and malfunction. This is again a picture of the vascular axis catheter. Long-term cuffed hemodialysis catheters are often used for temporary vascular access. These catheters provide temporary access while the patient is waiting for a fistula placement or as long-term access when other forms of access have failed. This type of catheter is tunneled subcutaneously to the internal or external jugular vein. The catheter tip rests in the right atrium. It has one or two of the subcutaneous Dacron cuffs that prevent infection from tracing along the catheter and anchor to the catheter, thus eliminating the need for sutures. Right internal jugular placement for this is a picture of the right internal jugular placement for a tunnel cuffed semi permanent catheter. This shows the temporary hemodialysis catheter in place. These are the clamps. And this is a long term cuffed hemodialysis catheter being used in this um, patient. The next thing needed is the dialysate or the dialyzer. The hemodialysis dialyzer is a long plastic cartridge that contains thousands of parallel hollow tubes or fibers. The fibers are semi-permeable membranes made of cellulose or other synthetic materials. The blood is pumped into the top of the cartridge and is dispersed into all of the fibers. The dialysate is pumped into the bottom of the cartridge and bathes the outside of the fibers. Ultrafiltration, diffusion and osmosis occurs across the pores of the semipermeable membrane. When the dialyzed blood reaches the end of the thousands of semipermeable fibers, it conver converges into a single tube that returns to the patient. The procedure. The needles, the needles used for hemodialysis are large bore, usually 14 to 16 gauge, and are inserted into the fistula or graft to obtain vascular access. One needle is placed to pull the blood from circulation into the hemodialysis machine or the dialyzer, and the other needle is used to return the dialyzed blood to the patient. The needles are attached via tubing to dialysis lines. Heparin is added to the blood as it flows into the dialyzer because anytime blood contacts a foreign substance, it has a tendency to clot. Patients are closely monitored for hypotension. Dialyzer bloodlines are primed with saline solution to eliminate air. Termination of is occurred uh, is um, established by flushing the dialyzer with saline to remove all the blood. Needles are removed and firm pressure is applied. Before the treatment, nurse should complete assessment of uh, fluid status, condition of access, temperatures and skin condition. The difference between the last post-dialysis weight and the current pre-dialysis weight determines the ultrafiltration or the amount of weight to be removed. Since antibiotics and other medications can get dialyzed out, they are withheld before dialysis. During treatment, nurse should be alert to changes in conditions and so measure vital signs every 30 to 60 minutes. Complications of hemodialysis 
hypotension that occurs during hemodialysis results primarily from rapid removal of the vascular volume or hypovolemia, decreased cardiac output and decreased systemic intravascular resistance. The drop in blood pressure can result in lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, seizures, vision changes and chest pain from cardiac ischemia. The treatment for hypotension includes decreasing the volume of fluid being removed and infusion of normal saline. Muscle cramps. Factors associated with the development of muscle cramps include hypotension, hypovolemia, high ultrafiltration rate, and use of low sodium dialysis solution. Treatment includes reducing the ultrafiltration rate and administering fluids. Blood loss may result from incomplete rinsing of blood from the dialyzer, accidental separation of blood tubing, dialysis membrane rupture, or bleeding after the removal of needless needles at the end of dialysis. Too much clotting or clotting disorders can also cause bleeding. Firm but non-occlusive pressure on the access site is used until the risk of bleeding has passed. Hepatitis B had an unusually high prevalence in dialysis recipients, but the incidence today is quite low. Lower blood transfusions, screening and hepatitis B vaccinations have lowered the incidence. Currently, hepatitis C is responsible for the majority of cases of hepatitis in dialysis recipients. Disequilibrium syndrome occurs during or soon after hemodialysis. Rapid decrease in fluid volume and bun levels causes this. The change in urea levels can cause cerebral edema and increased intracranial pressure. Neurological symptoms can result like headache, nausea, vomiting, restlessness, decreased level of consciousness, seizures, coma, or death. This can be prevented by starting hemodialysis for short periods with low blood, with low blood volume so that rapid changes in plasma composition are avoided. For severe cases, early recognition and treatment with anticonvulsants and barbiturates and slow infusion of about 250 cc of normal saline may be given. Effectiveness and Adaptation Hemodialysis is still an imperfect therapy for management of end-stage kidney disease. Hemodialysis cannot fully replace the normal functions of the kidneys and it does not alter the accelerated rate of development of cardiovascular disease and the related high mortality rate.